This video today is for you if you're considering a career in osteopathy or if you are a new student at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. Meet Arthur. It's good time. It's a fun time. Hi there. I'm Jennifer and welcome to my midlife student life. Well, there seems to be like thousands of videos on first year student life and med life and advice. However, it's very specific to that traditional education model. And at the CAO, well, it's a very unique and different program, the way it's structured, the way it's implemented. So I wanna share with you today some reflections after my first year in the program and offer you nine pieces of advice for new students starting this year at the CAO. Don't work full time if you can help come with a willingness to serve and assist. So I'm going to encourage you to show up with your glass half empty. Okay, this one's really important. Be flexible. Schedule your own steady work. Be ready to receive. Be ready to sacrifice for study. Right? You need to know your stuff. If you're not ready to move on, you will. Seek support. And remember, you're not alone. time. Okay, so whatever you've planned for your uh, study time in this course, in this program, double it, triple it. <laughs> it's probably not enough. It never seems to be like we have enough time. Um, ideally, if you didn't have to work and you didn't have any other life and you could do this full time, it probably still would be enough. <laughs> um, so my experience is the school recommends four to six hours per day that you are not in a lecture or clinical. Remember, this is a 12 month program. There's a lot of studying, a lot of time to not just read things once. There's no one and done here. You need to read it, understand it, apply it, reapply it, think about it a different way, bring it back. Um, it just takes more time. More time is needed than you're planning. I found, for instance, missing a day or two for work throughout the week, lifestyle, or life, you know, family, friends. Um, very quickly you can get behind on your readings, your assignments, and practicing palpation. Don't forget we need to practice hundreds and thousands of hours of practice, not just at clinic, but on your own. So it just takes time. But it's a good amount of time. It's good time. It's a fun time. It's, if you really love it, the time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. My advice to you, be ready to sacrifice for study. Oh yeah, did you know I named my skeleton Arthur? <laughs> I was reading the lengthening shadow and the um, name Arthur kept coming up and I really liked Arthur. You can call him Art for short, but I like Arthur. I think it's more dignified. Meet Arthur. Arthur, say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. Okay, let's talk about work and jobs. So the majority of my classmates do have jobs, part-time and full-time. If you plan to work full-time, you need to have a very flexible schedule and already have a pretty good grasp on anatomy and physiology going in. Most of the students in my class are working in the healthcare profession or they've studied similar material before, and yet they still struggle with the workload. Um, I scheduled a 20 hour work week and honestly, my first year it was still a little bit too much at different points in the year. Fortunately, I'm self-employed and I have many weeks when I'm not working through the summer. And during those weeks, I can, certain weeks I can take time off and I have the freedom to catch up, buckle down during the breaks. Yes, you can work full time and they will tell you that at orientation and complete the program. But honestly, the more you put into this program, the more you're going to get out of it. So my advice, don't work full time if you can help it and show up and be financially prepared. Okay, so let's talk about the schedule. Um, this one's pretty simple, very short in that it's very unique. 12 months of the year program. It's a lifestyle. It's all encompassing. It's all year round. So be prepared for this. Check out my video. I already did another video describing and laying out the exact um, timeline format, schedule format of the program. Check that out. I'll put it in the description below as well. Um, yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. My advice to you is to schedule your own study breaks. 
Okay, let's talk about attitude. So I'm gonna encourage you to show up with your glass half empty. Yes, bring along the knowledge and experience. That's an asset for sure. However, you need to be willing to be open to consider a new philosophy, a new perspective on health perhaps, and even anatomy and physiology, looking at it in a new way. There are many students in my class who already operate in a manual modality, but are thinking now about the body in a different way and becoming even more intimate with it than ever before. If you show up with a chip on your shoulder, you will not be ready to receive the wisdom and learn from the leaders who have traveled this road before you. So my advice, be ready to receive. Okay, let's talk about support system. This topic came up during my admissions interview, and to be honest, I'm really glad that they brought it up. I personally have a great home support system, family and friends, but even then, there are days when the outside world has expectations of me that I just cannot heed to because saying yes to another activity means saying no to my study time just like you witnessed last week in my video. It was really hard not to be outside all week. But the best support you can find, especially from classmates and upper year tutors who know exactly what you're going through, contact them, talk to them. Don't be afraid to reach out if you need help. So my advice, seek support. And remember, you're not alone. Okay, let's talk about the auxiliary hours. So these are like the volunteer hours that you have to earn, 300 before you graduate. My advice to you is to get involved, especially, and start working on them in that first year. If you live out of town or away from the school like I do, and you either drive in a great distance or fly in, um, this could mean extra trips to campus to complete. Don't wait until year three and four to start chipping away at this requirement. So my advice, come with a willingness to serve and assist. Professionalism. Be prepared for a very high level of professionalism. Take your schooling seriously. Take yourself seriously. You know what? The school does, so you should too. My advice, be prepared to potentially elevate your current standards. Okay, this one's really important be flexible. The school does an amazing job at providing the dates of your schedule about six to 12 months ahead of time, sometimes more. However, changes occur and you need to build in a level of flexibility and understanding into your schedule. Be mentally and physically prepared for it. Even this past year, as an example, we received very short notice about the return to in-person learning in January. And although this was a last minute change, um, the school wasn't about to make us miss any more in-person learning. As soon as the government gave the go ahead, they jumped on the bandwagon. And the reality was some of us only had a week to make arrangements for travel and it was a little stressful, but this happens. And just know that the school is always putting the priority of you and your learning is paramount. So my advice to you, always be ready to jump into new situations and change. Okay, relax. I know you're new to the school and the first few months in a new system can be very overwhelming, but take a deep breath and relax. During testing week, there will be some very stressed out students. Maybe you're one of them. OPs can be very stressful, the oral practical testing, but they don't have to be that stressful, especially you know, if you come with an open mind and an understanding that the teachers are there to help you, to better you, to guide you, but also to prepare you for your success, right? You need to know your stuff. If you're not ready to move on, you will fail and retake certain elements. This ensures, you know, honestly, that you do know what you're doing. Unlike traditional education, you are expected to know everything in this program from year one all the way through year four material. It's all testable, but stay the course, breathe. You will be okay. My advice, breathe slowly and continually. Okay, here's your bonus piece of advice. Actually something in the words of the school principal, Mr. Johnson said, 
Don't forget the why of what you're doing. Don't forget what brought you to osteopathy. And keep that as the framework or the backbone to your journey. Keep revisiting that when things get hard and difficult. Just keep focusing on that. Remember, osteopathy is a discipline, a practice, and a science. I hope you find this helpful. Until next time, dig on.